Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Scout Tactical Channel. I was trying to figure out what video we should do tonight and then it hit me. It comes pretty naturally. Last night I finished putting together a kit that I've been experimenting with. So, it's time for another bag. This isn't necessarily a bug out bag. This isn't really a get home bag. I'm an avid hunter as you guys know and so one of the things that I've been thinking about is my lord, I have the vehicle bags and I have all this stuff these systems at home, the systems are remote, and all. I don't have anything really with me when I'm hunting other than a little bitty pack, uh, which is actually like a shoulder bag from 511, that doesn't have that much stuff. And what happens if I get caught out in the woods? So I got to thinking through what would I need, what type of gear would I need to spend the night in the woods in an emergency situation, and I figured that not only would this double as an ATV bag, which is also a quad or a four-wheeler or a snowmobile, depending on your part of the nation, but this will be perfect for a vehicle bag because same thing. What if you're in your vehicle, something happens and you have to spend the night in your vehicle. This could be you're stuck, you break down, you have two flats, whatever. Uh, so the same kind of scenario. And that's my goal. When I'm hunting, I hunt on a place that I lease. It has multiple members there. But we don't always, we don't always know where each other are. We all have our own spots. It's a 1,500 acre place. We're normally nowhere near everybody else, or maybe just by one or two persons, people. And so we don't necessarily keep up with everybody. I don't even know everybody's name on the deer lease because over the years, this is our third year, people come and go. You may be in a similar situation, or what if you hunt public land? Or uh, you're hunting on a friend's place. So you don't necessarily know every inch of the place. You don't necessarily know everybody that's there. And they don't necessarily even have time or the want to keep up with you. This is where I am with it. Okay, so we're not trying to get home with this bag. We're not trying to go out into the woods and survive forever. This is a broken ankle. You're tracking a game animal until dark and you get a little disoriented. Uh, something happens on your ATV, whatever. This bag will get you through the night or a couple nights if you had to in the woods and it'll keep you alive. It's not a luxury setup, okay? How, what's the container for all this? Well, my own, I only have an ATV. Now, I could have a vehicle, like I said, this would double as a vehicle bag, but worst case scenario, I have the front or the back rack of an ATV. So, everything goes in this, okay? And this is a sea bag. When I move some of this gear, I'll show you what that is. Basically, the sea bag is the fancy word for a military duffel bag. That's all that is. I bought it for $12 plus $5 shipping on eBay. They're waterproof. I don't know how waterproof, but they're designed to, to float. That's why they're called sea bags. They hold all your gear. So it's a huge duffel bag, has these grommets and a pin that go through at the top, and it has backpack straps. So everything I have fits in there, and I could put it on my back and walk if I had to, trying to get to a better place to camp or what have you. Okay, inside the bag are this 511 Triad pack with a Brocos belt, which I've done a full review on, and you guys hopefully have watched. So the pack is uh, one thing, and in there is all my survival gear, emergency gear, the stuff to get me through, okay? Also in the bag is an SKS. This is a Chinese Norinco paratrooper, really neat rifle. You don't see a lot of these. Normally you think SKS and you think of some really huge barreled mama jama. This is not. This is a little 16-inch barreled paratrooper. It's a short SKS is all it is. It, of course, shoots the traditional 762 by 39 caliber, which SKS is an AK-47 shoot, and all the AK variants. So it's easy to get ammo. Not right now, but if America wasn't nuts, it was normally easy to get ammo. These rifles are fairly affordable. I won't do a full review on it tonight, but I bought this a few years ago from a guy that really didn't know what he had. It, it's uh, a really nice Model D, which is the detachable mag, a Norinco paratrooper. It's the second one I own. And uh, I got it for $250. Most of the guys are getting about $400 at the gun shows. And, of course, during the craze, you'll see this thing six, dollars $700, which is crazy. But anyway, $250. It's a knock-around gun. If it gets a ding in it, I don't care. It fits inside the duffel bag because it's a short carbine version, a little 16-inch barrel. Of course, I detach the magazine. It holds 30 rounds of 762 by 39 Now, what in the heck do I need a gun for in an emergency bag? Well, it could be for defense. Again, remember that I work as a police officer in Texas. I hunt in Texas. I know that there are bad guys out there, and guess what there also is? There's bad pigs. In the woods of Texas, you think I'm kidding you, man, but there is some serious 
pig problem down here and these guys get pretty vicious so if I get out of a situation where I have to spend the night in an emergency I, maybe I've lost my rifle I've leaned it on a tree and can't find it it's fallen down a, 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 a gully or over a cliff or whatever terrain you have now I know I at least have a rifle and it has plenty of rounds I've also got it loaded with soft points so that I can also hunt if I had to I could shoot a pig or a deer for food if it was getting all bad but that's not the goal here something's gone wrong and again I'm trying to spend the night in the woods I'm not spending my life in the woods I gotta get through the night I normally hunt with myself with my brother or with one of my children normally my son but my daughter also goes my daughter's a 12 year old little tiny cheerleader thing my son is now a 15 year old who's 6'1 so that's a pretty broad spectrum but they have kind of diverse needs and the goal is I'd hate to have something happen that would be a permanent medical injury or worse somebody loses their life because they didn't have the right gear with me all right I've got my sea bag I've got my rifle I've got my survival kit on top of everything in the duffel bag is this American Medical Kits Bighorn this is their new hunter series it used to just be the hunter now they have this whole sportsman line with the steel head the white tail, the big horn, and the grizzly. You've seen the grizzly in the extended stay. You've seen the white tail in my 72 hour bag. This is the big horn. It's the next one down. This is the number two, uh, one from the top, number two of the four. So it's a pretty comprehensive kit. And remember, the goal of this bag is there's some type of emergency. Something's gone wrong. So I have a kit that has some extended capabilities to get me through the night, get me through the next day, get me splinted up and out of here, what have you. Normally it's medicines and bandages at the top in this cool organizer, and at the bottom is kind of a trauma situation. It's got some quick clot here, uh, gloves, some compression bandages that I've put in, but all my medicines, band-aids, burn stuff, that's all up here. And that's stuff that could happen while I'm in camp or while I'm out hunting that afternoon or that evening, that morning. So the Bighorn, it's a good value too. The big, I think I picked this thing up for $56 shipped, $56 shipped, American of course, on eBay. So pretty easy to find. Okay, what else is in my bag? Well, again, this is vehicle or ATV. So I've got some vehicle equipment. This is an air compressor, $18.99 at Walmart. It's 12 volt. I have a 12 volt socket on my ATV. I also obviously have it on my uh, vehicle. So this would be great in the hunting vehicle or this would be great on my ATV. It goes in the bag and this has a light on the front. It's a simple deal to let you air up your tire. You don't want to get to where you're going. I hunt two miles, 2.5 miles, 2.4 miles from camp. So I don't want to walk back to my ATV at dark after the last light and I'm done hunting to find I have a flat or I've run over some type of stub or I have a mesquite thorn in it or something like that. So it's a no brainer, cheap 1899 air compressor. Also not shown in the video are other vehicle accessories. I have a winch on my ATV, I have a winch on my vehicle, but also tow rope, regular rope, a tire puncture kit, which is like a plug kit, that I, and some slime. I keep all of that stuff in the vehicle as well as a little work light or in this bag for the ATV. That way if you have a flat or you have to work on something, you're good to go. Okay, so Next up, also attached with the molly clips or the speed clips to the front is going to be the survival kit. I did a whole video on this. You've seen the personal survival kit. It's everything for your uh, for uh, your fire stuff, your light, a little bit of more medical stuff, multi-tool, uh, Swiss Army knife, all that good stuff, space blanket, emergency poncho, two forms of water things, two knives, two lights. That's a kit to keep you alive. If you have to have only one thing, you have to go with nothing, I would go with that. Okay, if you can only take one little bag. It's about a pound and a half, and this is everything. Worst case scenario, make a fire, live. This is on the outside. Also on the outside is a Nalgene bottle. It's a no-brainer. It's a flip top. Okay, you've seen these things. This one's 32 ounces, and it can hold my water. I do have water filtration in there. Also on the outside of the pack, is this a 511 6x10 pouch and guess what I've got in there I have two of these they go on the molly on the outside of the pack I took it off so I can show you the pack a little better but it has some mountain house freeze-dried stuff in it four to be exact full-size double serving mountain house freeze-dried freeze-dried meals in here because if something happens and I have to spend the night food is very comforting a fire is very comforting I may have one of my children with me 
I may have a brother with me. Somebody may be hurt. Morale may be down. You can die by just giving up, going into shock. So it's better to have food and water and some shelter. All right. In the other pouch is snacks, trail mix, beef jerky, little crackers, all that good stuff. Drink pouches, hot chocolate pouches, oatmeal, stuff that you can make to make everything okay. Now you got enough food for the energy to get back to whatever. Or if you're turned around that night, you've got whatever you need, you know, or something's gone wrong, you've got what you need. Now I say that turned around, you're thinking, hey, idiot, this is on your ATV. If you can make it to your ATV, can't you make it back? Well, what if your ATV was broken and you had that flat situation, or all of a sudden you're out of gas because you're excited to go hunting, which I've done before, and you forget to fill up the ATV on the way out, or if you're not that guy, like in Texas, we're walking half a mile back to our AT ATV or a quarter mile, and then we get on it and drive back to camp. Maybe this stuff comes with you. Maybe you have this survival pack on your back while you're hiking, and some of this other gear stays on whatever, wherever the guide drops you off, on your horseback, something like that. So your situation will vary. All right, last but not least, on the outside, I know you want to see what's in the pack, because that's what everyone loves, but over here, the Kelty Salada 2. I showed you this on the extended backpack in the big bag, the Extreme Bug Out bag. It's a two-man tent from Kelty, weighs four, pound, four and a half pounds. It says four on the website, it's four and a half re reality. It's a two-man. So now we have shelter, okay? We have medical, we have survival gear, we have food, we have defense, we have some vehicle stuff, some equipment to get our vehicle going, and then we have all this gear, so we're good to go, right? On the outside also, this excellent bag, please go watch a review of it if you don't understand what this bag is, is a flashlight on the patch, uh, the strap, so I can get to it quickly. This happens to be the Streamlight Protec HL which is the 500 lumen dude. This is a super bright light. It takes two CR123s, which I have some extra batteries in here and in the little bag that I normally have on me, on my shoulder while I'm hunting. It has also has the Brokos belt added so you have a waist belt. Even though this whole bag I've got coming in at about 15 pounds, so super light. The lightest system that I have as far as backpacks go. So let's bust it open. What do I have in here? Well, I have the rest of the stuff, right? So what are we trying to do at night? Okay, I have the tent already you saw. So I have two, because I normally have a child or my brother with me, and my brother likes to go with no gear. But I have two of the Escape Bivvies, the Adventure Medical, same manufacturer as the first aid kit, two Adventure Medical Escape Bivvies. This is like a baby sleeping bag. These weigh less than a pound, and they're $30 or $39.99, don't get me wrong, somewhere between there, but this is a great buy. And this is gonna keep, it's better than sleeping bags. We don't have room, right? We don't have the weight for a sleeping bag. Also in here, a 96 ounce uh, collapsible Nalgene water canteen, which you can strap to whatever. This lets me hold a little more water at camp. I don't have to go around filtering every time I run out of my water bottle. Also in here, some paracord, a tiny featherweight, uh, two ounce MSR, towel, packable towel, so you can dry off if you're soaking wet or somebody's bleeding out or whatever. This is more of a compressed. The FR-170, you've seen the FR-160, the old version in some of my other videos. This is the new updated version. And I think the only difference, other than it doesn't have the slider controls anymore, it just has the little dials. It also has the USB and mini USB on there, which is kind of cool for charging your phone or your device. It doesn't work that well, don't get me wrong. Don't think that this is gonna charge up today's smartphones, it won't. But it may give you a little boost because of the hand crank. It may give you a little boost just to get you going. And I guess I know I don't have the lanyard pushed through there, I gotta work on that. Also in here too, GSI, which I love GSI stuff. Two GSI stainless steel cups. These are 0.6 liter. So what are these doing? Okay, number one, you can drink out of them. Hello, it's a cup. Two, you can boil water in it. It's stainless steel. You put this on your stove, you put this on the fire, and you can boil water in it, which heats the dehydrated meals from Mountain House. So now you're getting it, it all works together. And I have two of these, why? Because there's two of us in the deal. I also have the awesome, and you've seen it before, Canadian Hiker Pro, at $85, pretty expensive, but it does work really well with the quick change fittings and it does 200 gallons of water. So I've got plenty. I also have the, as you remember from the survival kit video, not only do I have the big filter, 
But in the survival kit, I've got a frontier straw and I have the iodine tablets. So I have three ways to purify water because it's important to have some type of food, water, and shelter on this thing while we're out for the night. Also, the big kicker here is the GSI Inform Soloist Titanium Pot and Cook Kit. I've also shown you this before. And guess what I put in mine? MSR Pocket Rocket Stove. Runs off a fuel canister, which I have two in the bag, in the big bag. And I've got uh, some silverware, which I'll show you in a second. So you have your stove. Right? Now you can cook food. If it's soaking wet, you don't have to worry about collecting wood trying to get wet wood to start that night. This is an emergency situation. You didn't have time to set up camp. Something's gone wrong and you're spending the night in the woods. I, you know, a lot of people have asked me before, why in the heck would an experienced outdoorsman spend the night in the woods? I'll give you a quick story. As you know, as an Eagle Scout, right? I got my Eagle Scout in 1988. As an Eagle, as a hunter, and as a policeman, things go wrong. I'm gonna tell you right now. About 10 years ago, my brother, who was Grizzly Adams, the outdoorsman of all time, was tracking a pig that he shot, actually, when he was deer hunting at his lease near Nacogdoches, Texas. That night got away from him a little bit. The time got away from him. You normally see a lot of game at last light or at first uh, at dawn. It was last light. He's tracking, he's tracking, he can't find the pig. He's crawling through brush. He's doing all kinds of stuff. And then he realizes, where the heck am I? Now this guy is also an Eagle Scout. My brother uh, was an Eagle just like me. And as a matter of fact, I was the youngest Eagle ever in America. And he beat me by three months. So we're the two youngest ever. But so he's, he's turned around and he has to spend the night in the woods. He has no gear. He cannot make a fire. He has no shelter, no food, no water, no nothing. And luckily we're in Texas and it was an early season hunt. So it only got down in the uh, 60s. It wasn't super cold. He made it through the night, but it was a long one. He didn't sleep very well. Bugs were eating him to death, stuff like that. Anyone can have an emergency. If that wasn't true, then what I do for a living, 911, hello, the police, it wouldn't even exist. It exists because emergencies happen to everyone. If you prepare, and I know I'm preaching to the choir. If you're watching this, you're good to go. But if you prepare, then, it, then you don't have as much to worry about. If you do have an emergency, you at least have the gear or 99% of the gear that you would need to survive the situation. Okay, enough preaching. A couple more things in the pack. Up here, I got a compass, and of course there's a compass in the survival kit, but this is the awesome Silva Guide compass. If you guys don't have one of these, it you can use it on your map, and it's a sighting compass. It has the line in the mirror, so you can still see your bearing, and then you look up, uh, if you see that, you can look through your little pointer at where you're going and still in the mirror see the compass and the bearing. These are good and lightweight and affordable, 20 bucks. In here I've got a couple of glow sticks in case you need to uh, signal for help or you need to break one of these, throw it on the ground and work on that tire and put a plug in it on your ATV before you take off. In here I have the uh, some more cutlery a long handled spoon. These are Sea to Summit. If you don't know these, these used to be MRE spoons and now Sea to Summit's making these titanium spoons. Four or five bucks, not a bad buy, and they're long enough to reach down in the freeze dried pouches. And I have a fire kit. Fire kit you've seen before, but it has trioxane. It has wet fire tenders, a couple of those. It has a big lighter. It has REI storm proof matches, and it has a candle. I left the candle in the box so it doesn't melt over everything. So a fire kit. Now, some of the things that are missing, I'm sure you guys will already be hollering about. Okay, it doesn't have everything. And it doesn't have everything because I already have some stuff on me. It's called EDC when you're in the urban real world in today's cool tactical market. But what is it really? It's also called hunting gear and it has been called that for the last hundred years. So I'm out in the woods and that's what this bag is. When I'm out there, I have a fixed blade knife I have a folding knife. I have another uh, flashlight of some sort in my little bag and batteries. I have a multi-tool, probably a Swiss Army knife as well, just because I'm ultra redundant. I have some toilet paper with me, which wasn't in here. I have any little whatever's going on, like a Claritin or some medicine if I'm not feeling good, some Tylenol. 
and I have bug spray, sunscreen, chapstick. All those little things are already with me. I work as a police officer, so I also feel comfortable wearing a gun. Again, for the purpose of uh, pigs or something like that getting at, after you, or even at, at my dear least, we have this year a mountain lion that's been seen several times. So I have on a handgun. It's normally a revolver, 357 or 44, like a Smith Airweight. I have uh, both calibers and an Airweight, and that's on my my belt. So I have a fixed blade knife and a handgun on me, plus all my little EDC stuff in my little pack, and normally a hunting magazine and a couple of waters and some pop tarts or something like that in my little 511 uh, shoulder bag. So that's all going with this because it's likely that I'll make it to my gear with my stuff still on me. If I lose my shoulder bag, so be it. I have stuff in here. I may be a little bit short of what I ideally would want out there that night, but oh well. I don't have sleeping pads. I don't have pillows. I don't have all kinds of gear that you might have in a camping trip or in a, in a huge pack like the Kelty Eagle 128 that you saw me review. That's not what this is. Again, this is all in the sea bag, which is wrapped in a camo tarp and strapped to the front of my ATV. Or it's in the back of the Bronco, the vehicle, or what have you. So that's the purpose of the bag. I really think that you guys need to take into consideration what you would need if something happened now when you're in a, in a place where the grid's still up, economy's still running, world's still okay, just something's happened to you and you're not close to a hospital. Before I forget, one thing that's in the very front, there's a little drop pouch I always forget to show everybody. I have a little uh, trauma pack from American Medical. It's the same manufacturer as the first aid kit again. I like the AMK stuff. And the trauma pack has quick clot, compression bandages, stuff like that. These are $19.99 on Amazon and eBay. I highly recommend it. I also have one in the shoulder bag that I normally have with me. So super lightweight. It doesn't say the weight, but real light, real easy to own. And I have five or six of these in different systems. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the views. We're hitting nearly 100 subscribers. It's week six of the new Scout Tactical channel. Check us out on the web, scouttactical.com. Check us out on Facebook, Scout Tactic. And as always, thanks for watching.